Welcome back to Coach Trick, where magic meets inspiration and success. Get ready for a mind-bending card trick that's as baffling as it is captivating. In today's tutorial, our unsuspecting spectator will dive into the mysterious world of numbers and cards. Picture this. From a shuffled deck, the spectator selects and returns a card. They then attempt to find their card using random numbers that they choose. The twist? Well, they do indeed succeed in finding their card, but in the most amazing and surprising of ways. Best of all, this trick is entirely self-working. With no difficult moves, slights, or secret preparation, it's a miracle for all skill levels. Stick around as we delve into the magic, and as usual, take a look at the inspiring connection between learning magic and achieving the seemingly impossible more widely. Okay, get ready to be amazed and inspired. <laughs> Grab a deck and let's go. Okay, as ever, let's kickstart by taking a look at the effect itself. This trick is going to be a demonstration of the magic of numbers, or moreover, the magical ability of the spectator to use numbers to find their selected card. And to start with, you can ask the spectator just to give the deck a shuffle. And they can shuffle it as much as they like. It really is mixed. You can then take the shuffle deck and ask the spectator to select any card that they like. It really is a free choice. Let's say they go for this card just here, the Ace of Hearts in this instance. Ask them to remember that card and to show it around to the other spectators. And when they've done so, just to return the card to the deck. Now, in a moment, you're going to ask the spectator to name a random number. And you're going to demonstrate how you want them to use that number to deal a really neat pile of cards to the table, just like so. Really neat and really concise. So now, ask the spectator to visualize their card in the deck and to name a number that they think represents the position of their card in the deck. And it really can be any number. It's a totally free choice. Let's say they name the number 15. Hand the deck to the spectator and ask them to deal that many cards to the table. In this instance, 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Ask them to take the next card, to take a look at this card and see whether it's their selected card. Ask them whether that's their card. They're obviously going to say no because, well, it isn't. But that's okay because Okay, they haven't succeeded, but it doesn't always work first time. Sometimes this takes a while to, to get going. So let's try again. Let's give it a second attempt. And for this, you can ask a second spectator to name a number, or you can ask the same spectator. Either way, you're going to ask them to name a number, which is at least two numbers bigger than the previous number, so that it really is different. So remember, the previous number was 15. Ask the spectator to name a new number. Again, it's a totally free choice. Let's say they name the number 20. Again, hand them the cards and ask them to deal that many cards to the table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, ask them to take a look at the final card to see whether this time they've found their selected card. The Jack of Hearts. Ask them whether that's their card. They're gonna say no. Once again, we haven't succeeded. However, sometimes this happens. And actually what happens is a spectator subconsciously finds their card. So it wasn't at the first number and it wasn't at the second number, but sometimes it's the difference between the two numbers that can find the cards. So the first number was 15, the second number was 20. The difference is five. Sometimes that can find the card. So hand the spectator the deck, ask them to deal five cards, the difference between their two randomly selected numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Ask them now for the first time 
to reveal the value of their selected card. And to take a look at whether this card here is indeed the Ace of Hearts. The spectator has indeed found their selected card using the magic of numbers. And best of all, this is super simple to perform. So stick around because now I will show you exactly how it works. Okay, so let's take a look at the secret to this effect. This is one of those great self-working tricks that works via mathematics. So there really isn't anything that can go wrong. And you can even do this trick for one spectator, two spectators, or even three spectators. It's entirely up to you. Either way, it always delivers a brilliant result. And here's how it works. You really do start with a shuffled deck. So a spectator can shuffle the deck as much as they like. This all adds to the impact. Then they select a totally random card. Again, it really is a free choice. So in this instance, the 10 of spades. Now here's the only sort of key step really. You now need to get this card to the top of the deck. Now if you've got a preferred control uh, to bring the card to the deck, then you can use that control. You can use any control that you like. If you haven't got a control to do that, then here's a really simple way that you can achieve that as outlined in the original handling of the keystone card trick. Whilst the spectator is looking at and showing their card around, you can just quickly count off 10 cards from the top of the deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just casually separate those. The spectator can then return their card. You can then return these cards to the top of the pack, which places their selected card 11th from the top. If you like, you can now just give the deck a false cut to make it look as though that card really is buried. I teach this false cut on another video and I'll put the link in the description. But essentially, you're just swiveling off the top and then looping around the bottom so that nothing changes. So their card is still 11th from the top. Now in the act of demonstrating how you want them to deal the cards in a moment, you're just going to deal off exactly 11 cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. That obviously brings their selected card, the 10 of spades to the top just here. And then you can replace these on the deck like so. So like I say, you can use any control that you like. You just need to get their card to the top. And that's a simple way to achieve that. So now everything essentially works itself. The spectator names any number that they like, and it really is a free choice. Let's say they name the number 10. They'll deal 10 cards to the table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're now going to ask them to deal one more card and then to take a look at this card and to see whether that's their card. It obviously isn't. They're going to take this card, add it to the pack here and then return the pack to the top of the deck. Now for the second number, you can ask another spectator to choose a number or the same spectator, it's up to you. But this number just needs to be at least two bigger than the first number. So if the first number was 10, let's now say they name 15. Once again, they'll just deal 15 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This time you're going to ask them to take a look at this card here, the final card that they dealt. Once again, they'll say that isn't their card but that's fine. Return this pack to the top of the deck. Now you just need to calculate the difference between the two numbers. So 10 and 15, the difference gives us five. Now we can ask the spectator or another spectator just to deal five cards. One, two, three, four, five. And the spectator's card is now guaranteed to be the final card here that they just dealt. So in this instance, the 10 of spades. This is a great self-working effect. It starts with a shuffled deck. There's no preparation and they really can name any number that they like. It's a totally free choice. So it just seems impossible that you could somehow end up finding their selected card. Give this one a go. Practice it. Go out there. 
perform it, and of course, above all else, have fun. And there you have it, the magic of numbers and cards coming together in a spectacular finale. I hope you enjoyed this mesmerizing trick and that it adds a touch of wonder to your repertoire. Remember, the journey of learning magic is not just about the tricks. It's a pathway to unlocking creativity, focus and confidence. It's a reminder that the extraordinary is often within reach with the right mindset and a touch of magic. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time, keep the magic alive. Keep believing in the extraordinary and take care.